Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors, where we tackle wilderness medicine topics, try to prepare you for the outdoors, and give you information of how to treat yourself. We also do some gear reviews from time to time. Today, can caterpillars hurt you? The little, not the woolly bear, but you know that little black and orange guy that crawls around, the little fuzzy thing we've all picked up when we were kids. That one's going to be benign, no problem. But there are caterpillars in the United States, quite a few in fact, that can give you hell. All right? So these caterpillars, we're going to go down the list and name them. I'm going to show you some photographs and the geographic range of where these caterpillars are at. And then we're going to address treatment. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. We'd love to have you. And you'll be notified about every wilderness medicine video we do. All right, so there are approximately worldwide 165,000 uh, species of caterpillars. And in the United States, clearly not that many. Caterpillars are at their highest rate between August and November. And those are the times when individuals are picking fruit, uh, they're climbing trees, they're, they're trimming off branches, you're putting up your deer stand in September. Um, so they're pretty prevalent, and that's when you're, you, know, you could reach up and grab a limb, and you're going to grab a caterpillar that's going to sting you. So there are two syndromes that occur with these caterpillars. Syndrome one really is with these, the caterpillars that have the hollow spines on their body. Those at the base of those little spines, they have a venom gland. And that is the ones that are going to wreak havoc on your skin. The second one type are the ones that have the spines that are firm, that are not hollow, and those are going to cause a local dermatitis. Still can be a pain in the butt, um, but those are the more common reactions. So the caterpillars that in the United States, and I'm going to throw up the geographical location so you can see where they're at, the most one that gets the most attention in the headlines is the pus caterpillar or the asp caterpillar. It looks like a little beetle that needs a haircut bad. Uh, Florida, Texas, uh, there's when, when these guys are out and you get stung by these little guys or you get envenomated, uh, they have the hollow spines. They are going to live like a, leave a gridiron pattern on your skin like this picture. And then what happens is it becomes very red, inflamed, it hurts, really, really burns and hurts. Uh, it'll go away in about 48 hours, and then you have a lingering um, redness area to that area of your body. Now, in rare situations, you can have a systemic reaction to these guys. And what that means is you're going to have a headache, abdominal pain, muscle spasm, and vomiting. It's very rare, not something you have to worry about. Just wanted to mention that. Then the other one, uh, the other caterpillar that wreaks havoc with those hollow spines is going to be the I.O. moth, the American I.O. And that one also is going to leave a horrendous little mark on your skin and can make you sick. So those two are the main ones. The other ones are going to have the solid spines on their body. And those are going to leave, a, you're going to know it. You're going to know it immediately on all of these if you grab them or pick them up. Or you have a kid in the backyard playing and he sees one and picks them up, it'll, it'll sting, it'll hurt. And they'll embed those little bitty uh, spines into your skin. And those are going to be the uh, flannel moth, this guy. Uh, there is the saddleback, which is this guy. And this is his geographic location. Then you have the um, American I.O. moth. We talked about that one. That one's this one, and the geographic location. And then we have the uh, all too common, decimates the hardwoods, is the gypsy moth. And even the gypsy moth can embed its little spines on your skin. I've picked them up, and I've been very careful, but there have been cases where the gypsy moth has caused a local dermatitis. Now, in rare situations, little kids, two, two and a half, three years old, toddler stage, they see this beautiful, bright colored caterpillar. They pick it up, they put it in their mouth, 
and they get a local reaction, they start drooling excessively, they have some uh, pharyngeal swelling and edema, and real scary, but they will do fine and they get brought in. I've seen two patients in the last 30, 35 years. One was a gypsy moth, local reaction, and the other one, the mother didn't know what it was. We're not even sure if it was a caterpillar, but it sure did look like it when I uh, saw the patient, the kid. So what is the treatment? for these guys. So, believe it or not, you have it in your backpack, I told you to keep it there, is duct tape. Pull you off some duct tape, put it on the area, pull it off, and that will pick up those little hairs and spines that go into your arm. Just like if you went up against a cacti and they have those really fine needles. Even with a magnifying glass and forceps, it's really hard to find every one and pick it out. Then it's just supportive. It's going to be topical steroid cream, uh, antihistamines, diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, fexofenadine, which is Allegra. You can use any of the antihistamines. The steroid cream works great. Um, put on a cool compress and a cool washcloth. If you're concerned and you start seeing any of the other symptoms, muscle aches, severe fatigue, uh, any of those, you need to go right to the emergency room. Really important. Um, I want to mention a, I, I usually keep this to the USA of poisonous and toxic uh, critters and plants, but I'm going to mention this one caterpillar, which is out of the United States. It's in South America, Brazil, and Venezuela, and that is the silkworm caterpillar. And this is his genius name. And that caterpillar right there, that sucker, will mess with your red blood cells. And what it does, it works directly on factor 13. And basically, you start hemorrhaging from the eyes, from the gums. Uh, it's a mess. There have actually been a fair amount of deaths from this caterpillar in South America. Kind of a gee whiz fact. Just wanted to bring that up. There also can be issues with children, and there's been probably four or five cases in the literature where they get these spines stuck in their fingers and they wipe their eye, and they get these in their eyeball. And there are a half a dozen cases where they've actually had to remove the eyeball, which is horrendous for these children because of the severe inflammation and it can't be treated. There are also some case reports uh, people hanging their laundry out. And these spines from these caterpillars, when they're really just chowing down on a tree, come off their body with heavy wing, winds and goes into the sheets, the bedding, and clothes, and you're putting it on and you have this horrendous rash with these little red papules. And trust me, you could do one heck of an investigation and most of the time, vast most of the most time, we're not going to figure that out. I mean, you know, we're going to misdiagnose that most likely with something like scabies or something else. So, those are the caterpillars that can hurt you in the U.S. Some of it's rare, some of them are very common. So, hey guys, keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. I will see you next time.